Throughout this course, I've been using the console window to write out debugging and other diagnostic information so that we can see what's going on inside the application. For examples like this, that's all well and good, but when you write your real applications, if you're writing a console application, you probably don't want to have it littered with debugging information that your users are going to see. Or if you're writing an application that doesn't use the console window at all, you're going to need to have some other way to get that output visible to you while you're debugging your app. The way that we're going to do this in this particular example is by using the system.diagnostics namespace, which gives us access to something called the debug class. The debug class gives us a way for logging debugging information in a way that we can see it, which doesn't interfere with the actual output of the program. To use the debug class, I'm going to do a couple of things. As you see here on line six, the system.diagnostics namespace. This gives me access to something called the debug class, which gives us a bunch of features that are similar to what we've been using the console window for. The write line statement and a few other things that we'll take a closer look at. The debug class is going to log all this information to a place called the output window. And the output window is going to show up here in the IDE when we make it visible. To use the output window, there's a couple things you're going to have to do. First, under the tools menu, go down to the settings submenu and make sure that the expert settings option is checked. Once you've done that, under the view menu, there'll be an option for output. And when you choose output, this little output window will show up here in your IDE. Don't worry about the show output from option just yet. Right now it's empty, but that will be filled in for us. If you're a sharp eyed reader, you'll notice that I'm using pretty much the same code that we used in the reading and writing data files example, although I've reorganized it a little bit to use functions and so on. What we're going to do now is first build the application. So hit F6 and you'll see that down in the output window, a whole bunch of information was logged for us by the IDE. It says that the build was started, and then there's a line that says, hey, build one succeeded. So everything looks pretty good. Our code can also use this same output window to log debugging information. And the way that we're going to do that is by using the debug class. Go ahead and scroll down and see how the debug class works. This code probably looks familiar to you if you watched the earlier example on using files. I'm not going to focus too much on that. What I'm going to focus on instead is the information that I've put into the file to help with debugging. Here's a debug class call, and you'll notice that the debug object has a function called writeLine, which works pretty much the same way that the console's writeLine object works as well. Only instead of sending output to the console window, this is going to write information out into this output window down here. Here I'm right lining out some piece of information that the file was created and so on and so forth. And we do the same thing down here. A couple of other features though, there's a assert function call and assert basically makes sure that the Boolean condition supplied in here is true. If it ever evaluates to false, the debugger is going to pop up and say, Hey, something went horribly wrong in your program. You might want to take a look at it and we'll see an example of that in a little bit. We also have this here, debug indent and debug unindent, and that will help us make our debug log output more visible in the output window below, which we'll see in just a moment. Well, let's go ahead and run this program and we'll see what happens. Let's just take a quick refresher of the code. You can see that when the code starts, we have a string variable that holds a file path and we're going to create a data file. We're going to write some information out to it. And then we're going to read the contents back in. And all of that's going to be happening in these functions down here. We have a function for creating the file. We have a function for writing the file content out. And then we have a function for reading the content back in. So the last thing I want to point out before we run this is that unlike the console window, the debug object has a special version of write line. It's called write line if. So what you do here is you supply a Boolean expression. If this expression evaluates to true, then the right line happens. Otherwise, the right line doesn't happen. In this particular case, we're saying debug right line if the contents array length is greater than two. Well, if that length of that array is more than two, then this particular right line will happen. Otherwise, it won't. So let's go ahead and run this example. We ran the file and we added a whole bunch of content to the file. So let's go ahead and hit return to exit and let's go examine the output in the output window. 
The first thing you'll notice is that there's a whole bunch of output messages that were put here by the .NET framework. You don't really need to pay attention to any of these. These are messages that the debug version of the .NET framework is sending out for you to look at as a programmer, but for now we're just going to ignore that. What we're going to do is look for our first examples of debug output, and they are right here. For example, we have writing file data, file data written, the file has more than two lines. Well, where did those come from? Well, if we scroll down in our content, we can see right here, this did not execute because the file already exists. But if the file hadn't existed, we would have called the write line function for creating the file with content, whatever. However, when we write the file data out, you'll notice that the writing file data string got written out. And because it's indented, right here, you can see that there's a little bit of a tab space in here, which makes the debug information a little bit easier to read. Down here, we do the same thing. After the file's data has been written, we have a debug output statement that says the file data has been written, and that's also indented. And because the contents of that file had more than two lines, you can see that this write line if statement executed. Let's do one more example. Let's see if we can get this assert to trigger right here. What we're going to do is pass in an empty string content to write to the file. I have decided that here in my application that anyone who calls this function has to provide string content that's not empty. If I pass in an empty string, I want my program to raise a warning message and say that someone has tried to do something that I don't approve of. And the great thing about these debug messages is that when you build the release version of your code, none of this stuff gets included. Only the debug version of your application will contain these debug calls. So let's go back up into the code here. I'm going to uncomment this call to write file data. And I'm going to pass in an empty string. And that's going to cause that assert to pop up. Let's see what happens when I try this. So I'm going to run this. When I ran this, the assertion failed dialog message comes up. So here the title says assertion failed, and then I have some options. Do I want to abort or retry or ignore? Now this is a non-fatal assert, so I can just go ahead and ignore it if I want to. But for now, what I'm going to do is click abort, which will cause the application to stop. I can see where that assert was. It's down in here. You notice that there wasn't a whole lot of helpful information that came up in that assert box. Just a big stack of messages that says, hey, here's the function where things went wrong. So I can include a message in this assert. I can say, tried to call write file data with an empty string. This version of the assert function will not only pop up that dialog, it'll give me a nice, easy to understand message so I can see what's going wrong. Let's try that one more time. And you can see that this time, next to that little red error message, it says, tried to call write file data with an empty string. That's the message that I put into my assert box. And it shows me all the functions that got me to the current place. So right here at the top, it says, at program.writefiledata. That's where the assertion happened. And you can see that we got there by calling through main, and then we came in via the .NET framework. These are all the .NET framework functions right here. But it shows me how we got to where the assert is. So I'm going to click abort. And then at this point, I would go back and I would try to figure out, okay, who's calling write file data, who's doing it with an empty string, and so on. This is how you can use the debug class to add some extra debugging information right into the IDE while you are debugging your application.